guys, I am asked all the time to go over maybe some like, you know, top five, top 10 things that I can do to help a person plan a Disney vacation. So I am a travel agent and I do book vacations as a job now. And I have been traveling to Disney for quite a few years um, on a pretty regular basis. I've gone through some changes with Disney and kind of seen some things change and do better. And I've noticed just in me personally, planning things differently, doing things differently. I've definitely learned some tips along the way. So my first tip would be use a Disney travel agent. And I'm not just saying use me, I'm saying use a travel agent. I used one for my first trip and it was just so helpful. And in all honesty, you can book your fast passes, you can book your dining, you can do everything that you want for your Disney vacation and your Disney travel planner can only really just apply payments and apply uh, discounts. To me, that was worth it, not waiting on the line for discounts and if I needed to make changes and stuff like that, not having to call and wait and be on hold. She let me do whatever I wanted and I give my clients the same idea. I say, look, I can do as much or as little as you want. Feel free to reach out to me for input. I can do it all. I can do nothing. Just let me know the ball's in your court. <clears throat> so first and foremost, I'll say that if you're planning a vacation, whether you're planning it with yourself or using a travel planner, get your basics down. Know who is traveling, how old they will be when they're traveling, dates. Don't just say summertime. Say, I'd like summertime, this is our summer break, but cost is important. Or, um, you know, I wanna go to summertime and I, or I wanna go, to Disney World and I wanna see something special, you know, Christmas or fall or a flower and garden or something like that. Like, have some sort of specific but not so specific timeline. Unless, you know, you know you can only travel this week, that's it. Also have kind of an idea. Do you wanna travel Saturday to Sunday? Do you wanna travel Monday to Friday? Figure out when you wanna travel because that's gonna help a lot too. Either yourself or your planner try to figure out what is the best you know, week for you to go or a few days for you to go or weekend for you to go or whatever it may be. So name ages when you're traveling and what's important to you. Do you want the dining plan and you're okay with staying at Pop Century? Is it more important for you to be on the monorail? Is it more important for you to have a nice pool? Do you want a kitchen? Think of those specifics and send them to your travel agent or you know, when you're looking, be able to X those boxes off in Disney. Um, the more that clients can give me in that first initial email or conversation, the easier it is for me to feel out what's important to them, what they want, what they're looking for in a Disney vacation and go from there. And be honest, this is my budget. This is what I can do. This is what I want. This is what I'm willing to give up. You know, figure it out before you start planning so that you don't set yourself too high or too low. And then I'll say, you know, once you kind of have that figured out and you get your game plan going, I will say the first thing you need to do is set up a My Disney experience. If my clients do not have one, I set one up for them and I set their password something kind of generic that we can both remember because we both need to be in and out of that My Disney experience. That's where you link your hotel reservation. That's where you set everything up. That's where you plan your fast passes and your dining and everything. So definitely make sure that you have a My Disney experience once you have a reservation number, go ahead and put that reservation number in there and go ahead and start looking at the countdown and see where you are. If you're planning a Disney vacation and you want to eat at a table service restaurant, you really need to kind of plan that out and you, you really want to get that 180 day mark from your travel date to make those first reservations because you'll get the ideal times that you want, you'll get the places that you want, you know, it's gonna be real hard to get a Be Our Guest dinner or a Cinderella's Royal Table or a lot of these restaurants real close to the time you travel and it's just going to make yourself stress out. It's gonna make you know your travel planner stress out. Just try really to think ahead of when you wanna to go to Disney and just really try to have it at least six months out because it really does make planning that much easier. So you know, you set up your My Disney experience, you put in your hotel reservation, and then start trying to figure out what places you wanna eat. Look at menus, look at where you think you wanna eat, the type of food that you wanna eat. Just really try to plan it out. 
um, in the same aspect so that you have that ready to go for your 60 day fast passes. You know, you want to be on there bright and early in the morning that day that your fast passes are live because you want to get the best times. You want to get those hard to get rides, Pandora, Seven Doors Mine Train, Soren, Test Track. You know, you want all those big weight uh, attractions in a fast pass so that you don't have to worry about doing them, you know, like waiting in line. You don't want to wait two hours when you're in Animal Kingdom. Like that's just not going to be a good time for you, your children, whoever you're you're traveling with. So I think that having that My Disney Experience set up, get comfortable with it, put the app on your phone, get comfortable with it because when you're traveling that really is your lifeline. And I feel that a lot of um, clients of mine really, really, truly value me setting that up for them and them seeing how easy it is to maneuver, to change a fast pass, to add a fast pass, to change your dining, to add dining. Now you can see how much you've spent, how many dining credits you have, how many days left you have on your tickets. It's just an awesome website that has everything there for you. The next thing I always tell people to do is I always ask them what color magic band they want. Get your magic bands personalized, get them ready to go so that when they come, you're excited. It's another thing to build up that, you know, excitement of traveling and have your tickets and your meal plan and your chargeback and all that stuff on your magic band so that you're ready to go for your Disney vacation. And then I'll say the final thing I say is don't just say, oh, I want to go wing it and then get mad that you winged it and it didn't go as you wanted it to. And fortunately, Disney is a, a vacation that you do have to put a little bit into and you have to plan if you want to meet certain expectations. If you go in not having expectations, by all means, that's an awesome way to travel and we've done it that way and it's been an amazing vacation. However, if you want to scratch X, Y, and Z off your dining plan bucket list, X, Y, and Z off your attraction list, and you don't want to be waiting in line all day, you have to plan. As soon as they're released, get those um, calendars for when things are opening and closing and when parades are and when fireworks are and plan your days. Plan your days on what days you will be at what park so then you can plan your dining reservations accordingly so that when the time comes you can plan your fast passes and know that you're not you know overlooking your fast pass time with an ADR time or anything like that because it will really help you you know in the long run keep it together. I honestly like to have a rough idea of where we're going. Okay, we're going to rope drop this day and we're going to go to Tomorrowland first. We're going to try to get this done. Then we're going to go here and then we're going to go there. And then we have a fast pass to make sure that when you're traveling, you're not zigzagging across parks because you're going to just completely exhaust yourself and you're going to feel horrible at the end of the vacation. And that's not how you want to do, you know, you want to really try to make sure that you plan your fast passes and plan your park touring so that you're kind of either going in a circle or some general you know, route that you're not zigzagging or, you know, having to like cross Main Street when it's the parade or something like that because you're going to end up getting stuck and it's going to be bottleneck, you know. Unfortunately, you really do have to kind of think of those things and that's what I try to remember when, you know, planning a vacation for other people or planning a vacation for myself. So, you know, if I could give you any tips, it would be figure out exactly what you want and be honest with yourself. You know, if budget's important to you, then tell that to yourself or to your travel planner so that, you know, you're making the right choices and you're not trying to stay at the Grand Floridian on a pop century budget. Make sure you set up a My Disney experience and get your magic bands and your, you know, plans and everything all set in there. In order to make dining reservations, you have to have a credit card on file as a guarantee. Make sure that's in there. All those things will make it easier for you or your travel planner that, oh my God, there's an Ohana reservation that I wanted. I'm going to snatch that real quick. I don't have to go and look for my debit card. And before you know it, the ADR is gone. So, you know, make sure you have it like that. And then finally, of course, plan, 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 plan. You can do as much planning as you want or as little planning as you want, but just have a general idea of what you want to do, what you want to accomplish. Our tip was always, let's pick three things that we really, really want to get done today. And then everyone else pick one other thing that would be awesome. And that could be grabbing a certain type of snack, um, seeing a certain parade or fireworks show, sleeping in, you know, whatever it may be. So definitely, you know, nothing that's like, earth shattering or rocket science or anything like that, but it's just doing those things helps me tremendously with my job. So I can only imagine that when you're planning your vacation, it's going to make it that much easier for you. And they're very little things. And of course, if you're using a travel planner, just respond to their emails, respond to their messages. If you have questions, 
reach out to them. That's their job. Between the two of you working together, you can plan a really amazing vacation. Um, a travel agent's services are free. They're, they're getting the same rates that you're getting. You just have the benefit of someone is helping you out, doing the work for you. And in the same aspect, you know, by all means, ask your travel agent friends questions, but don't expect people to do it for free. I recently had someone reach out to me and wanted me to plan their whole vacation, but didn't want to, um, you know, let me have control of the vacation. And so I'm like, well, that's essentially working for free. Would you work for free? No, you wouldn't, you know, traveling and planning a vacation is, it's a lot of work and it's a lot of time to make sure that you're, you know, planning the best vacation possible. So, you know, just have that in mind. So hopefully that was helpful for you guys. It felt kind of rambly and all over the place, but those are just some things that I do and that I find very, very helpful. So thanks so much for watching and I'll see you guys in my next video.